Degenerative vitreous syndrome, the spontaneous occurrence of primary opacities in the aging vitreous that substantially interfere with activities of daily living. Because they have good visual acuity, patients with opacities in the aging vitreous are frequently denied treatment. But vitreous opacities produce continual visual obstructions, and best visual acuity is not synonymous with functional visual acuity over time. Appropriate candidates for vitrectomy can be identified by analyzing patients' written statements of their real-world visual problems, and by use of the National Eye Institute Visual Function Questionnaire. Here are the vitreous opacities and the statements of patients who have received vitrectomy in our practice. Every few seconds, opacities settle into the visual axis in each eye. I then have to do a purposeful saccade to jerk the trash out of my visual axis. This interferes with my most useful and enjoyable activities, which are reading and playing a musical instrument. There's a large floater in the temporal field that is dense enough and central enough that I perceive it as a moving object in my surroundings. I frequently have a fleeting impression that a car is approaching from the right, or a lizard is on my desk, or a roach is on the kitchen counter, or some other absurdity. Imagine lying on the bottom of the North Sea, looking up through an oil slick during a heavy windstorm, and you will have a picture of what it's like looking through my eyes. I have huge floaters. While driving my truck last week, I nearly hit a pedestrian who was coming across the street from my left behind the floaters. I didn't see him, and I almost ran him over. That nearly scared me to death. I need help. There's a gray haze in my vision, making car lights appear as if they're always coming out of a foggy night. Other lights have halos. Rooms look like they're filled with smoke. A thick blob of trash sits in 95% of my vision. It's like looking through screen wires sitting in Vaseline. I lose the detail and definition of people's faces to the point of recognizing them only by their voice. Any detailed task is difficult at best, and is now usually done by feel. When I go up and down stairs, the steps disappear for a couple of seconds. When I look in the rearview mirror and look back, the car in front of me disappears. When reading, I have to stop, lay my head backwards, roll my eyes, and then rub quickly to move the floaters. This ritual occurs while I'm driving, reading, typing, eating, watching TV, ironing, and while scanning patients. People have started staring at me. It's like I go from 20-20 vision one moment to legally blind the next, and then back to 2020. Every few days, I get a clear view through the right eye, but it lasts only until I blink. I hold the blink as long as I can, as I cherish the seconds of clear vision. I travel so much around the world, and uh, I started developing floaters in my left eye. At first, it was just an annoyance, and then it got to be uh, downright aggravating because uh, I'd, I'd have to close that eye and use the, the other eye if I wanted to see clearly. And uh, of course, when you close one eye, you lose your depth perception. So uh, it was it was dangerous to to be doing that. Then uh, I started developing floaters in my right eye. Uh, and soon it got to where I, I, I couldn't read the uh, exit signs at the interchanges on the, on the highway. I, I, I couldn't read street signs in town because if you, if you moved your eye to the left or the right to move the floaters out of the way, uh, by the time you got to read your sign, they were already back and covering it up. So it was a blur. You were going to have to give up your job. Yes, yes. It was too dangerous for me. My wife had rheumatoid arthritis, and she couldn't go with me anymore on some of these trips, and, and I didn't trust myself by myself. What would you say to doctors who are see, coming in the exam room and seeing the good visual acuity written down, 
on the chart and maybe thinking that the vitreous uh, floaters or vitreous opacities were not that big a problem. What would you say to those doctors? I would say you're talking about oranges and apples, really. Uh, there's two different things. Uh, uh, you're talking about the, the vision where I have moved the floaters out of the way and then the vision that I have to live with. It's two different things. And, and, and I go in and, and you check my eyes and you put what you read on the chart, it looks great. But uh, you don't know what it looks like back behind those floaters. Uh, so what was the operation like? Well, it was, it was like giving me my life back, you know, uh, because uh, I had gotten to where I, I scared myself driving and, and, and I couldn't do these things. And yet when I came out of the surgery, it, it was like having my sight all over again. People who suffer from floaters have often been led to believe that surgery is not successful and not worth the risk. This is tragic. I was told that myself a year before my surgery, and it was wrong. Clear vision has opened a new life for me. I have a productive future. I am able to give and to do, instead of a future of being given to and being done for. It's incredible. Although my acuity was quite good when the floaters were out of the way, the good vision was exceedingly transient. My functional acuity is now enormously improved. In short, the resulting improvement in my lifestyle has been nothing short of spectacular. I had not realized the negative impact of my eye dysfunction on my quality of life. My vision is now clear. Positive changes are profound and are noted by my colleagues and friends. I feel like myself again. Well, I just, uh, I'm glad you called me. Uh, I'm glad I got to come see this and, and be a part of your presentation. And, and if, if anybody wants to talk to a, a patient where it was successful, give them a number. I'll be glad to talk well to done. you. Well done. <laughs> vitreous opacity vitrectomy restores continuous clear vision in degenerative vitreous syndrome. Surgeons know the risks. Patients know the benefits. Let's communicate.